In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father in heaven, the start of these Lenten days, we come and we give ourselves to you. We ask for renewal of our hearts, our minds, our souls, so that we might do battle against sin and temptation as Jesus went to battle for us in the desert to give us and to show us the way. May we know the way to the cross, Lord Jesus. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear what it is you wish us to hear and my voice to proclaim your praise. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Three points where I'm heading. Uh, Libya, the cross versus our crosses, and survival reality shows. Libya, the cross versus our crosses, and survival shows. On Ash Wednesday, it marked the, uh, the ninth anniversary where 21 um, Egyptian Coptic Christians were kidnapped in Libya and beheaded on television. Um, and so it marked the ninth anniversary. They're, they're Coptic Orthodox uh, Christians, and it kind of took the world almost 10 years ago. And, and last year on the anniversary, Pope Francis uh, declared that they would be recognized as Catholic saints as well, and that this, this year, which happened to be on Ash Wednesday, it wasn't on Ash Wednesday, but February the 14th, that, that, they, that this year was the first anniversary of them being on our calendar. And so the story is, is that these, it was, it was 20 <clears throat> Egyptian men uh, went over to Libya to work. They, they needed to find work to, to support their families, their wives back home. And so they went over to Libya, not too far uh, from Egypt, to, uh, to work in, the, uh, in the, the concrete industry or whatever. And so they're working there. <clears throat> and Libya is a, uh, is a uh, vastly majority uh, Muslim nation. They have it on their books that, that there's a freedom of religion. But uh, as we speak right now, there are, there are multiple Muslims who are facing trial and death because they've converted to Christianity. So <clears throat> it's only a, a farce that it's freedom of religion. <clears throat> but nonetheless, these, these Coptic Christian Egyptian men went over there and working. And while they were over there working, the, uh, this a Libyan militant Muslim group kidnapped them and threw them in prison beat them and tortured them and were forcing them to convert to Islam. And every single one of them to a man refused to deny Jesus Christ. While the 20 of them were in prison, uh, there was another uh, African Muslim who was also imprisoned with them. He was from Chad. He was a Muslim man, but he was caught stealing in Libya. And so he was imprisoned with them. He wasn't beaten, he wasn't tortured with these 20. When the 20 were finally being, uh, being taken and led to the beach, right, looking over the sea, the, the Muslim man from Chad said that, I want to go die with them. I want to die like the people of the cross. You see, in, in prison, these men, knowing that they were getting ready to face death, witnessed the faith to this other man in prison. And as they went out marching to the beach, knowing that they were going to lose their lives, he decided to die with them and give his life over to Jesus himself. He's also considered one of the 21 martyrs for Christ that is now celebrated in Holy Church. <clears throat> Last week on Ash Wednesday, this literal Ash Wednesday, I, I had the, uh, a, a real fortunate privilege, a blessing, really, at 3 p.m. to go onto Oakland University's campus and to celebrate a, a prayer service in OU, a secular university, in the anyone, any OU grads, in the Oakland Center, <laughs> in the habitat at the Oakland Center, and it was awesome. We had 90 kids there and a ton of, uh, a ton of faculty and a ton of administration, 
And kids just kept walking by and gathering around and like, what is going on? And we only, they only really gave us uh, a day and a half to advertise it and we packed the house with that. They would have given us the proper time. Um, after, the, uh, after the service, uh, after the prayer gathering, it was just kind of kids just kept coming up and saying, Father, you know, I missed... I missed the, uh, the time. Can you give me ashes? And so I'd just give them ashes, say a prayer with them, and send them on their way. And I was, I was running late for class. I couldn't make it. Can I have that? And give them ashes and send them out the way. This one uh, faculty member, administration, what have you, there at OU came up to me, obviously dressed, not a student, came up to me, and, uh, and he was just talking, and, he's, and he was at the service. And he said to me, he said, uh, he said, he said Father, that was awesome. Thank you for coming. Uh, you know, what parish are you at? You know, I want to come visit you on a Sunday, etc., etc. And I looked, and he didn't have ashes on his forehead. And in the course of the conversation, I said, you know, so-and-so, Mr. So-and-so, would you like me to give you ashes? And his response to me shocked me. He said, no, I want to keep my job No, I want to keep my job. So here's fear. For nine years ago, men in Libya were willing to shed their own blood for the king of the universe who died for them. And here's a man in America who refuses to wear the cross on his forehead because he's afraid of losing his job. Fear and fasting are what destroy fear. I'm sorry, faith in fasting is what destroys fear. Mark is the author of this gospel that we heard today of Jesus in the desert, and, and, and St. Mark is writing always from the perspective that Jesus is coming to do battle with the devil. That's his perspective. Jesus goes out into the wilderness, and he does battle against Satan. He goes to war against evil, and how does he do it? With faith and with fasting, and he drives out fear. He wages war. He goes to battle with prayer, faith, and fasting. Fear is the devil's game. Fear is the devil's game. God doesn't work in fear. His tactic is to get us to identify with our crosses to get us to identify with our crosses and not the cross. If we identify with our crosses, with our shame, with our guilt, with our woundedness, with our sin, with our past sin, then we're always going to identify with our crosses, the ways that we've fallen, the ways that we've abandoned God, the way that we might be called out for being a Christian in the world today that I begin to look like that and not like Jesus and not living for him. A, a really good buddy of mine loves those survival TV shows, like the Bear Grylls, Grylls TV show, like where they, they just drop him in the middle of the, uh, the wilderness and, uh, and he's got to try to fend for himself to get out. Sometimes I think that we think of Lent like that. Like, that we have to, like, like we have to, like, like toughen up and just got to get through Lent. Like, I got to will myself through Lent. I gave up coffee. I got to will it. I can't have a cup today. And then I have a cup of coffee. And I'm like, I'm so weak, you know, or whatever it is, right? Or whatever it is, you know, that, that Bear Grylls, you know, that he, he's, he, he's in the 30 degree below zero temperature and all he's got on is a, is a hoodie and he's, he's, carving sticks out of, you know, out of elephant husks, right? And so, 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 but that's not God's design of, of our Lenten journey. God's design is that we unite ourselves with him in the covenant that he's already given to us. That he, he's given us, as we heard in that, that first reading from, from the book of Genesis, that, that it's his covenant with Noah, and he reestablishes the covenant with us in his divine will of the cross. And so Lent isn't about me, but it's about my participation in the divine will. And if we find our strength 
in ourselves. We're doing it wrong. We find our strength in where we're fed. And where we're fed is from the altar. And so as we come and we journey this Lenten season, it's the Eucharist that gives us the ability to identify ourselves as people of the cross. To not be ashamed, literally, to wear a cross, ashes on our forehead, but to stand up boldly, but also to conquer our temptation, to conquer our waywardness with faith and prayer and fasting. That's who the people of the cross are, and that's how we have to be, and that's how we grow in this battle against sin. That's how we grow in our union with God, and the devil wants us to look to our crosses. He wants us to identify ourselves as that, not as people of the cross. And so we've begun our 40-day journey to the cross, and it's the altar where we meet the cross. And so let's begin this journey worthily, and let's finish well, so that we can call ourselves people of the cross. Amen.